A prosthetic leg controlled by the nervous system. A new prosthetic leg controlled directly by the nervous system allows amputees to walk faster and avoid obstacles more easily. It also allows you to feel the limb's position in space. State-of-the-art prosthetic limbs can help amputees achieve a natural gait, improve stability, and speed of movement. The bionic limb for baloney amputees developed by researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and Brigham and Women's Hospital uses a computer interface that amplifies nerve signals from muscles in the rest of the leg and allows the user to move the prosthetic using their own thoughts and natural reflexes. Thanks to it, amputees can walk more naturally, are more stable on stairs and uneven surfaces, and move 41% faster. Faster than when they used standard dentures. The description and results of the research were published in the journal Nature Medicine. The newly developed device allows the user to bend or rotate the prosthetic foot using only thought. The bionic leg works by reading activity in the remaining muscles of a patient's amputated leg and using these signals to control the prosthesis. No one has been able to demonstrate this level of brain control, ensuring a natural gait in which the human nervous system controls movement, not a control algorithm, said Professor Hugh Hare of MIT, senior author of the study. According to him, users of the new bionic leg will be able not only to walk on a flat surface, but also go hiking or dancing because they will have full control over their movement. This is the first study to demonstrate natural gait patterns with full neural modulation, in which the person's brain controls 100% of the bionic prosthesis. Even though the limb is made of titanium and silicone and all these different electromechanical components, it feels natural and moves naturally, even without conscious thought, Hare added. Hare lost both legs in 1982. He suffered severe frostbite when he was caught in a snowstorm while climbing. His legs were amputated decades ago, but Hare still hopes to have the surgery again so he can use a pair of bionic legs in the future. Most limb movements are controlled by pairs of muscles that alternately stretch and contract. During a traditional baloney amputation, the interactions of these muscle pairs are disrupted. This makes it difficult for the nervous system to sense the position of the muscle and how fast it is contracting, sensory information that is crucial for the brain to decide how to move the limb. People with this type of amputation may have trouble controlling their prosthesis because they cannot feel exactly where the limb is in space. Most existing bionic limbs are based on predefined algorithms that control the movement of the limb and can switch between different operating modes under different walking conditions. Such advanced models have helped amputees walk, run, and climb stairs more smoothly, but it is the algorithm, not the user, that maintains control over the movement of the leg. By improving their prostheses, the research team developed an interface that controls the robotic limb using signals from the nerves and muscles that remain after amputation. However, these muscles and nerves must first be reconnected in the limb stump. A surgical method called agonist-antagonist myoneural interface AMI, is used for this purpose. This surgery preserves two sets of muscle connections important for moving the foot that were severed during amputation. This allows you to recreate natural muscle movements, so that the contraction of one muscle stretches another. This helps reduce pain, preserve muscle mass, and improve comfort when using the bionic limb. Furthermore, it allows patients to receive proprioceptive feedback about where their prosthetic limb is in space. The bionic leg itself includes a prosthetic ankle joint with sensors embedded in it, along with electrodes attached to the surface of the skin. 
They capture electrical signals produced by muscles at the amputation site and send them to a small computer for decoding. The leg weighs 2.75 kilograms, which is similar to the weight of a natural lower limb. Scientists invited 14 people with lower limb amputations below the knee to participate in the study. Seven of them underwent the AMI procedure. All subjects used the same type of bionic limb, a prosthesis with a powered ankle and electrodes that can detect electromyographic EMG, signals from the tibialis anterior and gastrocnemius muscles. These signals are then sent to a controller that helps the prosthesis calculate how much to bend the ankle, how much torque to apply, or how much power to deliver. The researchers tested subjects in several different situations. Participants walked on flat ground, on a slope, on a ramp and up and down stairs. There was also walking on a flat surface and avoiding obstacles. Participants exercised with their new legs for six hours a day. The researchers then compared the outcomes of patients who underwent the AMI procedure with a control group. AMI increased the frequency of muscle signals to an average of 10.5 pulses per second, compared with about 0.7 pulses per second in the control group. In a healthy person it is about 60 impulses per second. Participants in the first group were able to fully control their prostheses and walked 41%. Faster than people from the control group. Their peak speeds matched those of people without amputation while walking on flat ground. To sum up, in all tasks, people with the new neuroprosthesis were able to walk faster and avoid obstacles more easily. They also showed more natural movements such as pointing the prosthetic fingers upwards when climbing stairs or crossing an obstacle. They were also able to better coordinate the movements of their prosthetic limb and their uninjured limb, as well as push off the ground with the same force as a healthy person. In the case of the AMI cohort, we observed the emergence of natural biomimetic behaviors. The cohort that did not have AMI was able to walk, but the prosthetic movements were not natural and were generally slower, Hare admitted. These natural behaviors occurred even though the amount of sensory feedback provided by AMI was less than 20% of what people without amputations normally receive. This technology gives new hope to amputees who want to regain their natural walking experience. People after amputation want to have a sense of control over their limbs. They want to feel like the limb is part of their body. This type of neural interface is necessary to create this, admitted Tommaso Lenzi of the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. The MIT team wants to bring a bionic leg to market within five years. This will lead to a radical change in clinical care for many patients around the world. We are very keen to make this technology available to those in need said hair.